everyone. Uh, my name is Marcelo Zamorana. I am a cloud solution architect at Microsoft. I focused on infrastructure and automation. I am a big fan of DevOps and open source in general. And starting this year, I am also a HashiCorp ambassador. Today, uh, I'll be talking about how to package your DevOps tooling using Docker containers. Uh, basically make them portable and easy to share. I do not have a lot of slides, but I do have some cool demos. Hopefully they're gonna work. Uh, all the code I'll be showing today is gonna be open source and you can find them on my GitHub account. I'll have that information at the end. So lucky for you, you are stuck with me for at least the next 25 to 30 minutes, unless of course you are watching the recording. <clears throat> okay, so let's do this. Okay. So uh, I'm sure you've heard or used this phrase before uh, at some point in your career. I, I know I have. Uh, and this is the common excuse we see, especially when we have distributed teams working or trying to work together. Uh, at the beginning, it is hard to set the standards across all of them. And if multiple teams work on different parts of the application, integration is hard and time consuming. And it gets worse if the teams are in different countries, regions, or time zones, right? Uh, in overall, it is, it is hard to have a good visibility on their work in general. I remember a long time ago, uh, I was part of a team uh, that was distributed across multiple countries. Uh, as usual, we, will, we were troubleshooting a big problem. And after hours and hours of work, uh, we found out that uh, I was using the wrong version of the tool. And other times I was using some I was missing some patches or so they forgot to tell me of some configurations that they, they forgot they applied and there is always the same excuse right but it works on my machine and I am yeah that's awesome great now can you ship it back to me so I can do my work yeah that, that's not gonna work and uh, this is not the case just for application development if you realize it it is the same the same goes for DevOps and DevOps tooling in general uh, in a regular DevOps project, you will be using multiple tools at the same time. And let's be honest, uh, the amount of DevOps tools out there uh, is crazy and keeps increasing constantly. Uh, the initial configuration and onboarding installation is also a problem. If, if you're part of a team, you need to make sure everyone has the same versions and the same configurations. If not, you will have a huge problem and your environments won't match. Uh, if you're using Terraform, for example, you need to make sure uh, the, uh, everyone in your team is using the same version. And the same goes for the Terraform providers they're using. And this logic applies not only to Terraform, it applies to all of these tools, Chef, Ansible, Packer, all of them. So one way I found to solve this problem, of course, is containers. Uh, I'll be showing multiple scenarios where packaging all these dev tools in containers will make your life uh, a little bit easier, hopefully. And it will allow us to share our DevOps environment easily and make them portable. So uh, before we start with the demos, uh, here, are, here are some shortcuts I'll be using a lot. Uh, I do not like typing uh, because when I type, I make mistakes and I am lazy, so the less I type, the better. So, <clears throat> Let's move on. So demo time. Let's start with the initial environment. So this is my, my, my local terminal. As you can see, I'm using Windows Terminal. Uh, I don't have Terraform. I don't have Ansible. Yeah, I don't have those tools now. And I'll, I'll be using these, 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 these repos that are, are in GitHub as well. And we are gonna be switching between remote and locally across across these scenarios. So in, in this first scenario, I'll, I'll be using dev containers in GitHub code spaces. So let's go to GitHub. And uh, as you can see, this is the, the initial uh, Terraform project I created. It is a simple project that creates a couple of subnets and a binet in Azure. Uh, it is just one resource group, one binet, and one subnet, which is internal right now. So uh, before we go into detail, uh, GitHub code spaces. So there are uh, 
for those who don't know, Code Spaces is a configurable cloud development environment available in your browser, as you're going to see, and through Visual Studio Code. And I'll try to show both of them. There are three things I like about Code Spaces. Um, the first one it is consistency. Uh, you can create a single code space configuration that defines your environment or dev container, as you can see here, of every new code space that anyone creates for your repo. Once you have it, developers don't have to worry about uh, installing these tools, the, which right tools they need to install, the configuration, the versions, anything. They can just start using it uh, to comment, review, or contribute to this to this project as you're going to see soon. Uh, and it is easy. So let's let's open up. Uh, if we see here, we we have open with code spaces. I already have one here uh, open because it takes some time. Uh, as you can see, uh, if we reload this, uh, this is the same environment as I have uh, locally, right? Uh, the same colors, the same interactions, uh, same shortcuts, everything should be here. It is familiar, it's, it's my environment. So this is one, this the other things I like about it is customization. Developers can personalize aspects of their code space environment by using dot files. In this case, I'm using my own personal dot files that are publicly available, right? Anyone can use them, clone it, fork it. And uh, fun fact, uh, mine are based on a, uh, some dot files from a coworker. And uh, I thought it was really cool, so I just forked them. And, and again, as you can see, this includes shell preferences, additional tools, editor settings, extensions, uh, everything that, uh, that makes your environment yours. And, uh, and again, uh, the other thing I like it is, it is it also helps us with fast and personal onboarding. And this is this is really handy for new hires. With a dev container configured in your repo, any new developer can quickly onboard with the correct development environment, as you can see here. And they don't have to worry about which version to use, which configuration to apply, access keys, uh, uh, secrets, or request access to cloud portals or things like that. Right? I have everything just here. So for this first scenario, uh, let's say I am I am new, as I am saying. I was assigned to add a couple of subnets uh, to this environment, uh, to this Azure environment using Terraform. Again, I'm new. The only thing I have uh, in my laptop probably is my browser, Notepad, and maybe Outlook to check my email. So I open GitHub Code Spaces, and I, I go to I go through the code. I can see that this is the networking file when I have an internal subnet, and I can easily copy and paste uh, code I have here and create a, a public subnet. And if I go to the terminal, I can do a Terraform format. And as you can see, it's going to format my code properly. It's going to be aligned, look clean, pretty, things like that. I can even do TFLint to get some uh, code analysis. As you can see, it says here I am, I am, I have a variable but this declare, but I'm not using it. So probably I should use it instead of hard coding the name. I just paste it. If I run it again, now it comes clean. So that's great. So that was easy. I can just check the status, I only modified one file, I can add it, I can make a commit, new public subnet, right? And I can just push this to my main branch, and that's it, right? I didn't have to install anything, I didn't have to configure anything, I just, uh, I know Terraforms, I know how it works, so I just use it, I wrote the code and just push my changes. So this probably already triggered a, a uh, GitHub action, as you can see here, it is. Uh, this is the new public subnet my commit I just did. And uh, if we go to it, uh, it's already doing all there. It's going through the all the the steps, all the tasks uh, that I have in my action. And it's doing the plan. It is going. If you can see here, it's gonna just uh, add one one subnet. That's awesome. So that's great, right? Again, I didn't have to do anything. I just wrote the code and pushed them and that's it. And if we go back uh, to the portal and if we refresh this, uh, there is already my public subnet, right? That's great. <clears throat> but how about if I wanna use, uh, I wanna use VS Code. I don't wanna have the browser experience. I have VS Code in my laptop. Again, I don't have anything, but I wanna start collaborating. So for that, I, 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 can, I can connect to this code space using VS Code. Here, I can just connect to code space. As you can see, this is the code space we were using. 
I'm not going to open it right now. It takes some time, but I do have one already open here. All right, as you can see, it's connected to code spaces. And as you can see, it's the same, it's the same environment, the same terminal, the same colors, uh, all, all the information I used to have before, my shortcuts, and, and everything. I can do a, a quick good origin main, just to make sure I have the latest changes, and it's already up to date, right? So in here, I can just uh, create a, let's create a depth subnet. Uh, let's put the variable here. And I have all the same syntax highlighting, all my plugins, everything that, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm used to. Uh, let's create a now a depth subnet. And again, I go to my terminal, I can do a telephone format, I can do tflint, everything is good. I can check my status in GitHub. Yeah, I modified those files, that sounds good. I can commit, I can set new dev uh, subnet. Uh, oh, I forgot to add them, sorry. Now I just commit. And again, I can just push these changes to my main branch. And the flow is the same, right? Uh, it's pretty much the same environment, the same tools, the same shortcuts uh, is familiar to me, the same shell, uh, everything is there. It's customized, it's, it's my environment. I'm familiar with it. So if I go again to uh, to GitHub Actions, probably that already triggered uh, another workflow. Here it is, new depth subnet. Again, probably is doing all the steps in it. And it is doing all the uh, plan in it, it's planning already. So, uh, and if we go to to the portal, uh, we just give it a few seconds, uh, we're gonna see the depth subnet in there. So, and, and there it is. So great, right, again, so I am a new developer, I don't have anything on my laptop, I'm using depth containers in order to do my job remotely, and I didn't have to worry about installing these tools, configuring them, requesting access or access keys, passwords, client secrets, anything, right? Everything is already configured for me. So that's great. That's awesome. But let's complicate the things, right? In, in DevOps, nothing is easy. It's complicated, but we want to make it easier. In this second scenario, we're going to, we are asked to fix a bug in Ansible playbook that deploys an Nginx server. Uh, this Ansible playbook, it is integrated with Terraform, so once Terraform finishes doing the, doing all the provisioning, Ansible do, does all the post con, post provision configuration and deploys the Nginx server. So cool. Um, <clears throat> I have a uh, I have a, another container dev container for Ansible, right? So uh, and you can connect to it, and this this time the container is going to be running locally. So you can do the same. You can attach to a running container. Uh, here, as you can see, it's going to search for it. Uh, and you can attach to it. I'm, I'm, and that's and, and basically that's it, you are connected to it. I already have one already here that is connected. Uh, as you can see, it's connected to a container here locally, personal Ansible. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same. It's the same environment, the same look and feel. Uh, all my shortcuts are in here. Uh, I do have Ansible installed for me to start working, <coughs> right? Probably I already have Terraform as well. So yeah, I have everything that I need here locally uh, in my laptop, but in, in a container, running a container. So, I, and I'm using VS Code to connect to it. And as you can see here, it's already the, it's also the container in case I wanna use it uh, in GitHub. So since this is, uh, since this is Ansible, uh, we can do um, Ansible, Playbook syntax check. And um, let's see what's wrong with it, with this Ansible uh, playbook. We get a warning that uh, our host is empty, that's suspected, as, as you can see, there's an error in this uh, in this file uh, that might be here, name starts nginx. So let's go to that file, it's on line seven. So here, oh, here it is. So instead of services, it needs to be service, right? I save this. I run, and now it is working. So that's great, right? So right now, uh, if we if we wanted to, we can just go to Terraform, 
uh, we can do a sort of from init to initialize the environment and to test that this is working as expected. Uh, it is uh, in this it is initializing everything in the backend. And again, I didn't have to configure anything, any access, anything like that. Just attaching my BS code to this container, I have everything and I need. If, for example, if I do a, a quick check on it, I'm going to be validating, formatting, and TF linting the, the, the code. So that's great. I can do a Terraform plan uh, to see what's going to happen, right? And see if this works as expected. Uh, let's see what is in there. Okay, uh, let's run again. Uh, let's see what happened. Now we are going to do a telephone plan. And right now we should be authenticating with the uh, Azure environment and get the latest uh, from telephone cloud. And again, cool. So we can apply this and see if it works properly just to test it. And again, I'm doing everything locally right now. I just attached my BS code to this uh, dev container and it gave me all the tools I need in order to do my work. Mm, I didn't have Ansible, I didn't have Terraform, everything came with it. All the authentication, all the tools, all the secrets, everything I need to, con to connect to an environment is already set up for me. I just need to use it. Right? If, if you see here, it's already creating all the resources. And if we go to the portal, uh, let's see if it's working. Let's give it a few more seconds. Um, let's see what it is right now. It is already creating a virtual machine uh, in the cloud. Let's refresh the page. Uh, I think it is my internet. Uh, let's, let's give it one more second. Okay, cool. And there it is. So yeah, as you can see, it created a resource group with uh, uh, for the VM that we're gonna deploy. Well, the Terraform is gonna going to deploy. And if we go to the command line, it already, it, as you can see here, already starting, uh, already started the, the Ansible script it connected to it. It is installing, uh, it's running the playbook right now. Um, probably we can already see that uh, uh, the resource is already here. Uh, here is the the web server that we just created. Uh, that easy. And uh, if we check on the Ansible, uh, it is it is getting it is deploying the Nginx server right now. Uh, it is installing the latest version, and everything is there. So that's great. That's cool. So uh, I already have a public IP here from the portal. I can just copy here. And let's see if we can reach that website. Welcome to Nginx. Awesome, right? Uh, that's it. And the, uh, right now he's doing some extra work, but the initial setup is already there. And as you can see, it was just easy to attach my, my BS code to this container and have all the tools I need just to do my work. I didn't have to install anything. I didn't have to ask for any configuration, anything like that. And it is done. So as you can see here, I, has, I have some information. I could even SSH into it if I wanted to. And if we go back uh, to the web page, it's probably finished. Yep, probably this is the ugliest web page you're going to see. But yeah, you, you, you get the point, right? So that's awesome. So cool. So that's the, that's the second scenario. The third one is probably a little bit more personal. Uh, but probably you guys are going to relate to it. So from day to day, I have to interact with multiple tools at the same time. I will be doing Terraform in the morning, Packer in the afternoon, or Chef or Ansible, uh, interacting with GitHub, uh, creating repos, secrets, things like that. So, and sometimes I get those requests from multiple teams and each team has different requirements, different versions, things like that. So what I do it is I have this crazy Docker image that I, that I use all the time that basically has all the tools I might need and all the tools that sometimes I requ are required for me. So uh, let's see if I can make it, uh, if I can make it run. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. So 
we can do docker okay i think it's running already let's check the images i have so i have this crazy uh, here it is uh, devops version 2 which is as you can see is huge but you're going to see that has pretty much everything I, uh, and, uh, that I need in order to do my work. Uh, and that's something that uh, uh, I found I find it useful, especially if you are working with multiple projects at the same time, and you want to clutter your environment with different versions, different customizations, things like that. So I'm going to connect to it right now. Uh, again, it is the same attached to a running container. And we will be attaching it to my my personal DevOps container that has all the tools that I need in order to do my job. So let's try to attach to it, attach to running container. Let's see if this works. <clears throat> Let me give it a few minutes, a few seconds. Come on, come on. Okay, there it is. So this is my personal DevOps container. Let's see, uh, let's check it out. Let me minimize this, maximize this. This will have all the tools that I need on a day-to-day -day basis and sometimes even more. Okay, so it is open. So let's, let's open the folder. And as you can see, uh, you should have the same look and feel as, as the previous ones. Uh, but this time it is, uh, uh, I'm connecting it to, uh, to my repo folder. So let's see, as you can see, the repo folder is already there. Um, let's check the terminal. Uh, let's open the terminal. Come on, come on. So, awesome, yeah. It is open, as you can see, it's the same environment, everything. Uh, uh, in this folder, I have all the all the Docker files I've been using throughout the demo. And especially this one, is this is the big one that I use. As you can see, I have lots of tools that I, that, to be honest, I use uh, day to day. And uh, depending on the requirement and the project, I just change the version and adapt and adapt it to, to, to the needs. So let's say for the for the last scenario, I want to create a chef book book, push it to to GitHub and create some secrets so we can connect to to Azure. Right? Uh, that's that's easy. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Chef, it has a great generator that you can use in order to create cookbooks easily. It is just chef generate cookbook and we're gonna call it Docker current 2021 chef. Um, we just execute that. Um, it's gonna create a, a older query folder, some files that I need for a started chef project basically, right? And that's, that's really cool. So let's see, uh, if you should run right now and come on so okay yeah it is running so we're gonna agree to the terms and conditions now it is gonna again it's gonna generate everything that i need and if you can see here it's already here in my folder and it has all the all the metadata initial readme uh yeah it does a really good job creating a uh i started uh, started project for us so yeah that's cool it is committing cookbooks files to git it, yeah it also creates an uh, initial git repo for you so you can you can start working on it right we can we can get into it three and if you see here it is all the all the files that we need so yeah that's great uh i created my first chef cookbook but now i need to push it to github right i need to create a, a github repo there and uh, uh, I'm just, I can do that. Uh, I can use the GitHub command line. I, I can, to create an initial repo, for now it's gonna be, uh, yeah, it's gonna be Deco Chef 
Docker Kong 21. Uh, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna add the origin. Yeah, that's cool. And if I do a git remote, for example, you can see that it is already there. I can get a git, I can set a git statuses. Um, probably it's already committed, nothing to commit. It's just the initial cookbook. And again, I can do a git, uh, 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 I can push this to my main branch. And if we go to uh, to GitHub, uh, let's see. We should see here it is. It is uh, the initial chef uh, that we just created. And as part of the requirement, they also told me to to create some secrets. So again, I can use the the command line uh, tool to do that. I can just let me clean this just so everyone can see. And I'm just going to create some secrets, right? And this is so uh, in the future, my chef Google can connect to to uh, to to Azure, right? So if we go back to to the portal and we go to settings, uh, uh, and if we go to secrets, uh, I can see those secrets being created there. So yeah, that's great. So again, it doesn't matter the workflow you need. If you see the way you package these DevOps tools in containers makes your work a little bit easier. So you don't have to worry about which version to use, what, how they are configured, how do you need to access them. So as soon as you create the initial dev container properly, your team should be able to, to use them right away. Awesome. So going back to slides, uh, uh, well, we saw how easy it is to use dev containers locally and how can you use VS Code to connect to them and use them in, as your dev environment and DevOps environment. It is easy to customize and easy to share, right? At the end of the day, it's just a Docker file that you can push to your GitHub repo or to a container registry. Uh, we also saw uh, how GitHub Code Spaces uh, is a complete development environment in the cloud that uh, is also easy to customize, right? It's, it's amazing. It's just easy, especially for onboarding new developers. I think it's a great tool, and and uh, I'm really, and I, I I just love it. So, uh, some key takeaways. Finally, uh, we saw how easy it is to share, package, and reproduce these complex DevOps environments using containers, right? Uh, at the end of it, that's the goal: is to make them uh, easy to share across your team, so everyone has the same environment. It helps with onboarding, again, and uh, at the same time, it works as a built-in documentation. Since everything is as code, you can see what configurations, tools, versions, everything were used at a specific point in time, right? and you can go back uh, and review those. Uh, we can also have multiple dev containers based on the version, project, you name it. As you saw, I have that, uh, a personal dev container where I have all my tools the way I like it, with more customizations and with access to multiple things. Uh, finally, here are some resources uh, that I have uh, to get you started on it. Uh, and with that, uh, I just want to say thank you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Let's keep in touch. Here is my contact information. I'll be around if there are any questions. Uh, all the code I show today is going to be uh, available on my GitHub account. Uh, I'm going to make those repos public. And thanks to Docker for the opportunity and to Peter, Candice, and Garth, and all the Docker team to make this happen. Thank you. Bye.